one of the mental states is as a enumerated as one of the seven like factors of enlightenment. So PT rupture. All of us who are here have already experienced one way or the other that mental state PT or rupture because there are so many kinds of PT. You don't have to be a meditator or you don't have to be a Satipatthana Vipassana practitioner. But there are many different types that one can experience. So, loosely speaking, it is a very pleasant sensation. Okay? Very pleasant sensation produced by the power of the thought and then it manifests in a physical sensation on your body. Okay. Manifest as a physical sensation on your body but it is produced by the power of thought. And that physical sensation produced by the power of thought is called PT or rupture. And as I started, you can, everybody have already experienced one way or the other. Because one of the PT that everybody can experience is called Kama Mesa PT. Kama Mesa PT. So in here is um, through the exceptional experience of these sense, okay, sensation. What a sense sensation we experience through the eyes, which is the form, sounds, the ears, the smell, through the nose, taste through the tongue and the touch through the body. Okay, these, directly with them, these are called sense. Okay, five physical senses. Through those five physical senses you get pleasure. And when these pleasure become exceptionally good, and if it hits the spot, hits the person's spot, then there is a very unique nice pleasant experience vibrate through your body and you experience it. Okay, as an example, let's say you are listening to a song and the, let's say you have a great interest in song, music. You are listening to it and that music or that voice is so good. You are listening and suddenly you have a goosebump. You hear a sound and then suddenly it is so good, your body vibrates and then you have a, a goosebump. Or you can even say, expression is, the hair on your neck stands. The sound is so good, you got the goosebumps. And also sometimes you're watching, you're climbing, let's say on a mountain or in the forest and the scenery is so good and so quiet and then suddenly there's a chill and the vibrations and goosebumps arises in you. You 
because of this environment, that quietness, that silence, that beauty, it touches you and your body shivers. That is through the eyes, through the sounds. And sometimes we all have food taste, okay, some taste. Especially Asian people, uh, also definitely Western, but I don't know what, maybe cheese or something. It's uh, talk about chili or talk about a certain fish paste or talking about curry that you like very much or just by smelling that smell, talking about it, just the thought about that food and the smell just give you a chill, especially you are watching it, talking about that food and suddenly a great surge of saliva has come into your mouth. Because of that food, the thought of the food is so good, you like it so much, a huge amount of saliva come in and say, mm. oh it's so good, I can taste it in my mouth. That's the PT. Okay. So I won't go too much in detail. When you see a form that you exceptionally like, sound, taste, touch, smell, and so on, you've got these kind of physical feelings. Feeling so good, chill, goosebump. Okay. That is all. Karma me sati. Rapture arises from the sense pleasure. Exceptionally good. That hit the spot. Another kind of PT, another kind of PT is also Pali what is called Loka Mesa PT. Loka Mesa PT is we all, you know, we are striving our best. Even that little children too, they go to school and you have a comeback or you got grade A, all A pluses and then uh, you got distinctions you graduate from high school, uh, you have a honor roles. These kind of things, great accomplishment comes in. At that moment of accomplishment, you have a, a great, great feeling and you can even feel it in your body. Through the accomplishments of the world in nature, okay, whenever there's a world in nature, through the accomplishment, you got these kind of very exceptionally good feeling in your body. So through the loka, the worldly's accomplishment, whenever something special and unique you accomplished, then you got a, a chill or great pleasant feeling. So sometimes somebody who has never really do much work or climb, but everybody push you and Let's say you go there and you climb Grouse Mountain for, for the first time. You go and you climb and you go and you climb. And you go right to the mountain top. As soon as you got to the mountain top, you felt a great feeling of accomplishment. And then the whole body vibrates with that. You close your eyes and you can really feel it in your body. That is the PT arises from the worldly accomplishments. So that kind too, all of us have one way or the other, one situation or other, we have already felt that kind of PT. And the third kind is called Buddha Meta Mesa PT. Buddha Mesa PT. Buddha is the realms of birth. Buddha or Buddha. In other words, Sansara birth and you die and you born again, you die, you burn and again the samsara and that one is also expressed of the word Buddha. So what happened was in a life, okay, all of us, every one of us, we have done great okay, observation of sila precepts. Okay. We observe five precepts, we observe Eight percepts, nine percepts, ten percepts, and so on. Okay. That observation of precepts. 
And also we have done a lot of generosity. We give, we do charity work, okay? We give our time, we give our service, all these things for the poor and the needy. And whatever you can donate in terms of material, we have done a lot. Of course, we are doing, and sometimes we do something a lot more unique than we usually do. In other words, we really push ourselves to do okay, this kind of thing. Basically, dana and sila, charity, generosity, and the morality of precepts when you do. And sometimes, or some people, quite often, and some people regularly reflect upon the precepts that they have observed. Okay, see, today, you just reflect from the moment you woke up till now, you just reflect upon it. That's it, just even only five precepts. I didn't break anything. And then you deeply reflect upon that result of these precepts that you observe. And you go back for a week. No, I didn't break it. For a month, a whole month, I didn't break it. A whole year, I didn't break it. And you reflect and you reflect and you reflect. And you found that your precept is spotless, blameless, faultless. And then when you reflect and when you found that certainly there's that BT rupture arises in you. Observe the precept so much and you rejoice in it, you are happy about it, you observe deeply, and because of that, too, all the people that you are in contact with, nobody suffer, nobody suffer, nobody got hurt, nobody got harmed because of you. Instead, they have peace. Like that, deeply through cause and effect, you reflect it. And if you are deeply aware of it, reflective of it, that kind of pity arises. And the same thing too with generosity. You think about something that you have donated, okay? You go to the, let's say, city square, and then there's a community garden, and you are the one who has organized it, you started it. You inspire everybody, you put a lot of effort, you put your money, buy swells and promote everything you do, you do, you do, and then you start it right from the early spring, right to the winter, and the winter comes and gone, and everybody cut, shut down, finish, everybody take all the fruits and fruits, everybody's happy, no pesticide, no chemical, and then you reflect upon that work of your generosity. This is service. And then you see how much it's great, how good it is. And then thorough understanding and knowing of the effectiveness and beneficiality of that generosity sink into you and you feel that great rapture. You feel fantastic, you feel satisfied and that you just sink into that pleasure or rapture. That is called Buddha Mesa Piti. The reason is, this kind of dana and sila, you do this thing, and you are doing great work, and they produce wholesome karma, good karma. Because of that wholesome karma, good karma, that is the cause, and the effect is, in your rounds of rebirth, you have a, a better existence, a better life, a happier life, a peaceful life. It supports peace and happiness in the future lives, but still it promotes within the field or the realm of samsara, birth and death and birth and death and birth and death. You are still in there, and these are the causes 
to produce peace, happiness, better existence and future life. That's why it's called Buddha Mesa BT. It is within the realm of samsara, but in death. Not out of samsara, not from the extension of rebirth, extension of rebirth, or getting out of or eliminate all kinds of suffering, both physical and mental. So these are all pity. It produces, it causes that different. First one is from the exceptional sense pleasure. Second one is your accomplishment. Third one is your dana and sila, generosity and morality. One has to reflect. Okay? You don't simply, okay, I observe the precept. That's great, fantastic. Just by observing the precept, you already got a kusala, wholesome karma. You already got it. But by end of the day, you sit down and you reflect upon it thoroughly and deeply, the whole process. In other words, thorough understanding. And then to do that, there's a volition in it. So the same precept that you observe for the day is double and triple merit just by reflecting. By reflecting with clear understanding, proper understanding through cause and effect. The same amount of action that you have done. The kusala, let's say before you get a one pound box of kusala, for the same thing by reflecting it become two pounds and three, become three pounds. It just multiply. That's why when you do generosity, dana, and when you observe sila, always reflect. If possible, every day by the end of the day, with pure, clear understanding with cause and effect. So those kind of things are called piti, rupture. But they are all in the realms of, realms of, birth and death, birth and death. These doesn't produce or support for the escape from the samsara, from the realms of birth and death, or total escape from the physical and mental suffering. In general, you can say these are ordinary rupture or PT. But in here, we have another PT. It has an adjective in front of that PT. It called Sambhojinga. Okay, Bhojinga. Seven factors of enlightenment. Bhojinga. And the, out of the seven factors, one of the seven is also PT. So in other words, PT that can be called one of the factors of seven enlightenment as another PT. And that all the PT we have discussed does not cover under this Sambhojinga PT. PT Bhojinga. So in other words, this is the Dharma and the realms of Dharma. And as soon as we say Sambhojinga, Piti Sambhojanga in the realms of Dharma, practicing Dharma, it automatically refers this PT promotes to escape from the apart, escape from the realms of birth and death. This PT promotes and causes as a part of the link to escape from the total physical and mental suffering. So this is a different kind of PT. They are all PT. As we all know, what is PT? It is the great physical pleasant sensation produced by the power of thought in general. They are all the same regardless whether it is the within the realm of sansara or out of the realm of sansara or heading towards the out of the realm of sansara. So it's called Piti Sambhojinga. In here, 
what kind of things do you need to do? What kind of things you have to think about to have this kind of PT? So the first one is the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. You reflect upon the qualities of Buddha, the qualities of Buddha. And we already know a few. First of all, it's called Rahan. Rahan itself. One who is deserved of all the respect of all beings. Because he has or she has totally eliminated, okay, uprooted mental defilements, lova, dosa, and moha. Greed, anger, and delusion. Totally uprooted, nothing left. Because of that, that being deserved the respect of all other living beings. And that word is called Arahant. Okay, Buddha has that quality. And also all the, let's call it Buddha saint. Okay, Arahant. The Arahat. They have this quality. So you should reflect upon that quality of the Buddha, Arahant. We already know that one. And also, Sama Sambuddho. Okay? We always say Namotasa Bhagavato Arahato, that is Arahant. And Sama Sambuddhasa, that is called Sama Sambuddhasa. It is the quality of the Buddha. He has practiced so much in the last Dharma talk. We mentioned about it. Okay. What it is is, there are three great accomplishments to become a Buddha. Accomplishments of the causes. Accomplishment of the result. And accomplishments of service. Three great accomplishments. To be a Buddha. And in there, the accomplished open of result. What it is is he has practiced so many eons and eons of lives and perfect, okay, in general, 10 perfections, in details, 30 perfections. And in his last life, he has attained a knowledge. In other words, he is uncomparable when it comes to his intelligence. In what way? Number one, he attained all this knowledge and intelligence without a teacher. Okay. He discovered by himself, he practiced by himself, not following a book or a school or university or any other teacher. That's number one. Number two is, he is so intelligent if there is any problem <clears throat> or if there is a question asked, he just have to incline, okay? incline his mind. In other words, he pay attention to the questions and to the problem. And then at that moment, instantly, he has the answer. Intuitively, he know the perfect answer for that problem or a question. That is the kind of knowledge, okay. Sama Sambo Dasa. That is another quality. Those two we heard quite often, we talk about quite often. There are other things. <clears throat> he is the master teacher, uncomparable. He can size up any living beings who is in contact with him. He knows the mental states and then he can touch the perfect spot, the right spot. One who met Buddha is already they have practiced a lot because of the great karma. If you remember it, there's a full great rare opportunity or full good opportunity. This one is to make a living Buddha. So they already have a lot of parami or perfections, but they are still lacking something. And Buddha, he just sizes up a person, look at a person, and he knows exactly 
what that weak point is or what is that link that is not connecting to be enlightened. You just simply know and he will teach very casually and appropriately only that little section he inserted and once he inserted that section automatically the other person got enlightened because that is the only thing that he needs and that kind of a teacher, a master teacher nobody is comparable to him he teaches to get enlightened he teaches one to escape from the realms of rebirth that's the quality so if I keep on talking about all the qualities, it won't end. And you can, of course, go and read a book and get a lot more. There are many, but there are nine great qualities. You reflect upon these qualities quite deeply, okay, with full understanding. And then, whenever you say full understanding, Everything works like a perfect running machine, cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, that kind of understanding. And then you also reflect so deeply you are in a way it is in a concentration mode. And when you reflect deeply into it, one can get into a state of rupture. Sometimes you think about it. Out of those things, you know exactly which one touches you. Some people just say Buddha, and even they simply say Buddha, 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 Nusti. Okay, Buddha Nusti. What it is is he who knows, okay, he who knows what? He who knows the four noble truth. Dukkha, Sisa, Samudhiya, Sisa. Niyora Desa, Mega Sisa, the Four Noble Truth, by himself without a teacher. That is also the quality. And when you do that, you had a great rupture and PT arises. And the other one is Dharma, the quality of Dharma. There are six great qualities. Okay. When we have opportunity, we'll go details into these quality one day. And you reflect upon it and you pity may arise. And also there are nine great qualities of Sangha. Okay. When you say Sangha, it's Ariya Sangha. Sangha or monks who are Ariya, noble person. There are nine enumerated in the scripture. So basically, nine, six and nine. Nine qualities for the Buddha, six quality for the Dharma, and nine qualities for the Sangha. And if you reflect upon it deeply, and rupture or pity may arise. And the fourth one is reflect upon the qualities of your parents. Okay. In the West, it's not quite heavily emphasis on the qualities of the parents and teachers especially the teachers but in the east because of the culture these are giving a very high honorary role parents and teachers how high it is it is at the equal level as Buddha for a child for a son and a daughter to reflect on the quality of the parents you put in the same room for the teachers you put in the same room Basically, it is the result of expressing gratitude in your heart. You are not talking to anybody, you are not talking to your parents, but you sit and think about how your parents, how your mother carried in the womb, gave birth, make sure there is nothing happened, no insects, no mosquitoes may bite, no ants may bite, feed you, clean you, everything, how you brought up, how you give it, education, and so on and so forth. You reflect on these things that your parents have done for you without any expectation back in return. 
they worry and they worry and they worry and they provide as much as they could. And when you reflect these things, what are you doing? You are actually developing the mental state of gratitude. And when you develop that mental state of gratitude, a great sense of rupture comes in you. <coughs> Even right now, as I'm talking to you, it came through me. Because when I, even though I'm talking to you, I'm actually thinking about my parents. And by deeply thinking, my body vibrates. That's it. That's called PT. And the same thing with the teacher. Of course, you have about 20, 30, 40 teachers. But think about one teacher that really affects you. That really change your life and reflect about what the teacher did for you. In other words, again, developing a great sense of gratitude in your mind, power of thought, power of gratitude, and pity may arise. So reflecting upon Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, your parents and your teachers, great sense of rapture will arise in you. You have to figure out which one is effective for you. And these kind of PT are the one, are the causes okay, that promotes you, that takes you onto the path to escape from the realms of samsara. So these kind of ruptures are called PT Sambhajanga. PT that amounts to the standard and quality of the seven factors of enlightenment. So if you want that kind of rupture, you must reflect upon the qualities of Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, parents and teacher. Five. Of course, there's one more. This one is, what are we doing? We are practicing. We are practicing. Satipatthana Vipassana. In other words, we are practicing, let's go to very simply put, we are practicing meditation. We practice meditation and then you build mindfulness and then you build concentration. Mindfulness, concentration. Of course, you have to work hard, work hard, work hard. Don't think these come easily some people think these kind of things come easily. And uh, within a few months or within a few years, they think they will get it. If they don't get it, they might get disappointed. No, it's not. Not even now. In fact, all of you are sitting here, most of you quite regularly, most of you as frequently as you could. The reason you could do this way among all the yogis that I have met in the 25 years, about a couple of thousand, between one and two thousand, only about 10, 15 are here. Why? Because you have practiced many lives in the past. There's a parami, a certain amount of that habit, okay, that mental habit is with you and you can sit here. That's the reason you already have parami. You already have practiced it. And even with that, don't expect to have it in a week or in a month or in a year. If some yogis might come in and they say, oh, within a year or two, they have experienced or they have rised. Look at it. But even in the same Okay, in this same life, if you actually plot that yogis back to the past, okay, they might not have practiced this Satipatthana Vipassana, but they have practiced about 10-15 years of Samatha concentration meditation. That accumulation gives you the background of concentration power. That concentration power can carry into this Satipatthana Vipassana, Bhopankaha Vipassana. In other words, 
there's a concentration meditation as a forerunner to this insight meditation. So don't be discouraged if you don't experience the Dharma. Okay. Even in a group, I know some of you have to practice about 10 years to come to a certain level. Some of you have to practice about 15 years. Some of you have to practice about 20 years. But when that time comes, those people know it's really worth it. That experience is really worth it. That experience is really wholesome. That experience gives you the knowledge, intelligence that you could never ever have by yourself by simply thinking. That kind of the experience that you consider, oh, it's worth it, I've been doing it for 10, 15 years, when the time comes. But you need perseverance to reach to that spot. Don't have expectation, don't have time limitation, but simply I will persevere and every observation is another observation closer to the enlightenment. That kind of mental state you must practice. So when you practice and when you practice, we all know, all of you here know the levels of insight. First and foremost, you understand discriminative awareness between mind and body, and then you understand experientially the causal relationship of mind and body, and then experientially you know the basic, basic level understanding of what is dukkha, suffering is, and what is anicca, impermanence is, and what is anatta, okay, non-self name. The basic level understanding, not through reflective thinking process, but experientially. And on that third level, it might take years. Some of the people take years to pass over that hump. I'm not saying that you won't experience, you experience a lot. Sometimes you are still in that level. At the one perfect moment, you might go and experience insight that belongs to number six level. At another perfect moment, you might even go and experience insight experience that's equivalent to number 11 level. These little things, at the perfect moment, you experience here and there. But that doesn't mean that you are in the number 6 level or number 10 level or number 11 level. But you have a little peek into that. Just like you are a high school kid, not graduate yet. But on a group tour, you go to university and you have a little peek of the university. Like that. You might be still in the level of the third insight level. Clear comprehension of the Anicca, Dukkha and Anatta. And you have experienced little here and there and here and there of the higher level. In a little perfect moment, one spot, and it never comes again. But some yogi, quite a lot of yogis, they think that they are there. That is a very important thing to know. It is dangerous. And here you think about that you are in number three and you practice and you practice and you practice. And suddenly, okay, I will approach in a different way. Suddenly, you have a great rupture in your meditation. This exceptionally good sensation, body sensation in your body. Not once, not twice, quite often, quite higher frequency. Let me put it, I'll put it in a backward, the carriage before the horse. You experience this kind of rupture, you meditate, you are practicing and you rupture. And at that level, what is happening is you have already stepped into the, the fault inside level, which is 
be udaya biya nyala, the inside knowledge of arising and passing away. The indicator is you begin to experience not only one type, not only once, quite a few, two, three, four different types. And then with a higher frequency. And then with the ability to sustain for a certain period of time. That is the indirect okay, indicators that you are on the fourth level of insight. So in here is one must practice and one reach to a stage, the fourth level of insight. Udaya, Vaya, Jnana. Insight knowledge into the arising and passing away of both physical and mental phenomena with clarity, with sharpness, and at that moment, you have these great sensations in your body. And that is Bidi Sambhajanga. That kind of Bidi is called one of the seven factors of enlightenment, PT Sambhajanga. So we have six kinds of PT. One is reflecting the cause factors are reflecting on the Buddha, the core reflecting on the Dharma, reflecting on the Dharma. The reflect upon the qualities of parents and teachers and the bhavana, meditation, okay, kamasana, about mental development. You reach to a certain stage and you have rupture. These kind of six ruptures are called piti stambhojanga. They are different quality than the first three types we have described because they promote. They are the cause, they are the stepping stone to escape from the realms of rebirth. They don't reproduce to be recycling again and again in the realms of rebirth. They push you to the light limit, they push you out of the circle. So that is Piti Sambhajanga. So as we have talked about Piti Sambhajanga, we know two major types, one that amounts to Sambhojanga, another one is that doesn't amount to Sambhojanga. Now PT, we just talk in general. And PT, do, there are various levels of PT. One called is called Kodaka, Kodaka PT. Kodaka PT is like a, you're meditating, you're meditating and suddenly there's a, just one little rush of a chill. Sometimes people say, oh, there's a chill in my spine coming on. And suddenly I feel a, a great cold coming down. But not in the sense of that you're fearful and unpleasant and you don't like it. Okay? You might not be falling in love with it, but you have no aversion towards it. You don't dislike it very interesting and very unique. Sometimes it's even pleasurable. That kind of thing. A chills come in, a waves come in, a little brush of vibration come in. Just only one time, only a very short period. Suddenly come and suddenly gone. That is called Kudika PT. Just one moment but very unique. It could be pleasurable, but it is not something that you dislike or you don't like or you don't want. It might even feel like neutral feeling, but very unique, very distinct, and comes in. That is called Kutika PT. That is the lowest form of rupture. And secondly, it's called Kanika PT. Kanika is momentary. These momentary PTs are, first and foremost, they are not just one time. They come in, it's like a, a wave, just like a wave. Suddenly, you are there and a whole flesh of goosebumps run through. Maybe the whole right arm, maybe the whole left arm, Maybe in your chest, just a wave, not just one shot. It is a 
for quite a few seconds it goes on like whole waves and sometimes it is like as if you are being for a few seconds but a few seconds a long time it is a, a bucket of ice water throw over you that kind of thing or a warm warmth warm vapor envelop you that kind of a thing but it comes in not only once frequently now and then now and then come in whenever they come in okay, whenever they come in it is not just one moment quite a, a series of moments come and rush through your body that kind of feeling so warm water cold water and so on a series of goosebumps, a series of vibration. Again, some are distinctly pleasurable and some are, in your mind, it is totally neutral. Okay, neutral, but you have no dislike to it. Even though it is neutral, it takes a great interest of you. Your interest is right in there. So keep in mind, PT is something that it must be fantastically good, pleasurable. No, sometimes it's neutral, but it keeps your interest very deeply. Sometimes, let's say, on your shoulder muscle, boom, 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 vibration. Just like with a perfect time spacing and nothing pleasurable, but it is, you cannot escape from it. Your interest is right there, shaking. It might even doing that for about one minute or two minutes, and then settle down and disappear. Sometime, like uh, there's a vibration the vibration come in, this vibration is, let's say, from the toes up to the waist. The whole body is like a vibrating at a very high frequency. Okay, we can uh, understand through that construction worker do with the jackhammer, the whole body vibrating. Okay, that kind of vibration. But that jackhammer vibration is very, very gross. And this is very fine, very fine, like even not just the whole lower body, every part of the whole body is vibrating, 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 and suddenly it vibrates for about a minute or two, and then there's a breakthrough. Don't know why, don't know how, from the waist down, and suddenly it breaks through and goes through your upper body. That vibration it's very distinct very clear it just goes through and the whole body vibrates and the same is true sometimes your upper body is vibrating and lower body is like a statue like a piece of rock nothing happened but lower upper body is vibrating with a very very fine frequency and it is very very interesting and sometimes very pleasurable and then after about a minute or two, then it might break through to the lower part. From the lower goes to the up, from the upper goes to the down. Happen. And then sometime later, another sitting later, you might get again, you might get again. In other words, a lot more frequent than the first one. It is called Kanika PT. And the third one, the third one is Obega, Obega PT. Obega PT is um, it is more like a we can call it a wave rider. We can call it a wave rider. Especially nowadays, we can understand what those people in Hawaii are doing. Mm. 
surfing the waves, surfing the waves. That would be a good example. They are waves and at first they are waiting with a little board and the waves come in and the waves just take you right to the crest and then suddenly it just shoot right down, 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 down and then goes right up to the crest and go right down, up and down, and up and down. That kind of a thing. Or another thing you might be able to imagine would be uh, you go to this uh, p and &E and you ride a roller coaster. You go boom, go down, boom, go down and then go up and then go down and how you feel inside your body. That's kind of a thing. So I would call it a wave rider. The feeling, it just sweep you up to the crest of the wave and go right down, up and down, up and down and you actually are feeling like as if you are surfing on a wave or as if you are on a roller coaster. Those kind of roller coaster feelings and this is a lot finer and a lot more beautiful than those physical experience. But that is the closest example one can express. Okay? So that is the kind of a thing. You just go wave after wave after wave up and down and up and down and you can, your heart can actually sink when it goes down and you go high when you go up. That kind of PT is called Opega PT. So this is higher quality than the first two. And the fourth one, Now my mind will black. <clears throat> it might come back again, the Pali word, I forgot at the moment. But anyway, I know the facts. The fact is, you're meditating. You're meditating, some of you already experienced it. Okay? You're meditating, and of course, right now you're sitting, you can feel the heaviness in your body. You can feel the pain, you can feel the pressure, you can feel the tension on your neck and shoulder and so on. Okay, but you meditate, you observe, you meditate, you observe. But you go on that level. That level is, watch, the fourth inside level, rising and passing away. And suddenly, all these pressures, all these heaviness, all these tension totally disappear. Everything disappears from your body. And what it is is the lightness of the body. Your body becomes very light. Okay? Your body becomes very light. Um, to give an example will be, we all know, astronauts okay, out in the outer space and those little modules totally weightless. They have no pressure on their body. Just like that. There is no pressure on your body. Weightlessness. Okay. Very light and also the body is very fit. Okay. Fitness, physically fit and also your mind is very fit, both physically and mentally. And also the alertness and awareness, okay, the efficiency of your mind is very good and very powerful. It is you are not in a doldrum, you are not in a dozing, that your mind is totally awake, awake, awake. Everything is light and awake. At the times of Buddha, there are people who are practicing and when you get that kind of PT, When you get that kind of PT, people actually float or people actually levitate, levitation. Okay. It has nothing to do with, there are some monks who have a great samatha level high and they can actually travel in the sky, they can so to speak fly in the sky. That is one thing. This has nothing to do with ability to fly. 
but at that moment your body is so light, your body becomes elevated. Levitation, you can have a sense of levitation. And some of the yogis, okay, even let's take the Buddhists away, take even some time in India for keys, sadhu. They call it a yogic flying. They're sitting like this. Sitting like this, and when they are in this, they can hop. From here, you can hop about five feet, ten feet, and you will go like that without changing any position. Even you can witness nowadays. But that is through the psychical power, concentration power. But here is a thought, a thought from this arising and passing away, understanding it. You got to that level and your mind and body become so fit, so light. And sometimes you might even see yogis, not all the time. So when you're meditating here, and then of course with you, we just lift up. We can feel it. The mind wants to lift and it lifts. I can feel the muscle, I can feel the flow, I can feel the weight. You're meditating. And suddenly, just the arm, not the whole body, just the hands. That hands is inner, no gravity, totally weightless, and the hands just simply float. And you know there is no connection with this hand and your body. This is a piece of material floating light. And they can stay like that for two hours, three hours. Just imagine you try and say your hand like about two, three hours. You know, that is the lightness, okay. lightness of the body or the power to the point of levitating, levitation. That is the fourth kind of PT. And all these kinds you can get when you are in this, the fourth level of insight. These are PT. And sometimes it's a supremely sensitive, very beautiful sensation. Like you are as if in a enveloped by a great light, warm and cool and protective inside. You don't even want to get up. And when you are in this kind of revelation, there's nothing, nothing except except that feeling and you. That kind of a thing. So that is the fourth kind of feeling. Okay. So the fifth one is called parana parana piti. Parana piti is it pervades every cells in your body. It pervades every cells in your body. You are Example the verb is used is you take a little cotton ball, cotton ball, right? round ball, and put it into a cup of oil. The oil soak every aspect of that cotton ball. The cotton ball soaked by the oil. That kind of a thing. And these supremely pleasant, very subtle, very fine peaceful and cool sensation vibrates, soak every part of your body. And when they are like that, there are some yogis, it is in one record in the, uh, the Mahasi period that was documented. One yogi sit like that for 13 hours. 13 hours is, it is not that 13 hours he is mindful and knowing everything got to the fourth level and got into the Parana PT and your body don't even want to move. Lunch bell comes, you don't want to eat lunch. You, don't, you skip the lunch and you sit and you sit and you sit. And PT, one little information to notice, it's also a hara, nutrition. Okay, there are some beans okay, in a Brahma realm some things. They don't eat substance nutrition. 
their nutrition is PT. PT can sustain your body without even food to a certain level. From the Buddhist, Buddhist point of view, in a normal human life, up to seven days, but after seven days you need a substance nutrition. So that is Parana PT. So don't think you will experience all five of them if you experience one or two. Okay, quite frequently, go through there, there's, I don't go into lot much lights and so on and so on and so on. Those are the manifestations or indications of the insight level number four arising and passing away and in those things you manifest and do it and as a insight meditator one must take a great care do not just sit stick into it do not grab into it and you can really get hooked into it and if you do you will not progress to the next level they are called They are called distraction of Dharma, let's call it. At that moment, you have to forcefully observe these okay, PT rupture. Okay. Do no rising and passing away, rising and passing away, rising and passing away. And if you can observe forcefully, slowly and slowly, the arising of these PT will become less and less and less and eventually it will stop. And when it stop, when it stop, you can, you are ready to go to the next level of insight. And here, just for information for future purpose who are practicing, okay, it stop, that doesn't mean that it totally stop. You practice, when it stops, you rise to another level, you rise to another level, you go to the real high level, very high level. And you go right to the 12, 13 level, and if you become skillful, one can play up honing the skill. At that level, you're practicing, and I say, okay, I'm going to go into the fourth level of insight. Your mind is inclined, your mind is set. That is what, where you are going. You practice. You are on the 13th or 12th or 13th level, but you want to experience the fall, and you set your mind, incline your mind there, and you go, can go right into it. You set your mind to the Vinganyana, the solution, and you can go right into it. Of course, you can't do it quite easily. You have to practice, and you go to practice, as I call it, Honing the skill. But don't try now. Go as high as you can. Once you go as high as you can, then you can start practicing and to do what level of jnana you want to go in. And when you go in, you will experience. But at the same time that you have graduated level, you can go in, you can get out. So that's for the future reference purpose. So that will be more than enough for PT rupture. One is that doesn't amount to some bhajaka factors of enlightenment. And the other one is the PT that amounts to some bhajaka factors of enlightenment. That's the second one that we prefer. Okay. So may all of you able to practice Satipatthana Vipassana meditation precisely and correctly and may be able to reach the fourth level of insight, Udiya Bhyana, and experience these different kinds of PT as a part of the progress in your practice as soon as possible. Sadhu, 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 Udham Pujemi. Jamie. Sarah, Jamie.